Here I'm going to walk you through a simple example of KSP to give you an introduction to the idea, and then we're going to go through and do a little more challenging problem after that. So here we're looking at barium carbonate, which is an insoluble compound. So we're looking at a case where this is something that does not dissolve in water. However, in reality, things that form a precipitate to a very, very small degree will ionize, will form uh, a dissolution into that water. So we might be talking about an extremely small amount of this, and most of this is still undissolved, but we want to be able to analyze how much of this stuff will actually dissolve in the water. So for that, we have to look up the KSP value. So when we go to our chart for KSP in the IV data booklet, the KSP for this is 2.58 times 10 to the negative ninth. And that's our equilibrium constant for this. So what we want to do now is we want to set up an ice chart. Now in our ice chart, So in our ice chart, what we're going to do is we're going to plug in the initial amounts of everything, how they change and what the equilibrium amounts are. Now for solids, their activity is 1. And so this is not going to change in concentration by having some of this disappear. So we can ignore that and omit that from the equilibrium calculations. Our initial amounts of dissolved substances are 0. So we're looking at a case where we're putting into the solid into the solution, and then we're going to look at how much of it dissolves. Okay. So from there, here's what we do know. We do know that the change in barium and that the change in carbonate will be the same. So we know that for every one of these formula units that dissolves, we'll produce one of these and one of those. It's impossible for us to produce three of these and only one of those. So we're going to end up with an equilibrium we don't know, but we do know they'll be the same in amount. So let's call each of them x. So those are our concentrations at equilibrium. We'll have x molar of barium, we'll have x molar of carbonate, by x molar of this dissolving. Okay. So from there, we now want to plug into the KSP our expression. So let's set up a new color here. So our KSP expression is going to be equal to our products. So barium, and the coefficient on barium is 1, so we have an exponent of 1, and carbonate, exponent of 1 as well. And then the barium carbonate is emitted from our expression because it's a solid. So at equilibrium, this is equal to x squared because we have x for the carbonate and x for the barium, and we can plug in our KSP value to be equal to that. So we have a simple expression here where we can solve for x. x ends up being the square root of this value, which is 5.08 times 10 to the negative fifth. Now that's my molar concentration. That's not in grams per liter or anything like that. If I wanted to put this into grams per liter, which is currently moles per liters, I would have to multiply it by the molar mass of barium carbonate. Now what x is? x is the concentration of barium in equilibrium. It's also the concentration of carbonate. And those are correlated to the amount of barium carbonate that dissolved in a one-to-one -one ratio. So this is how much barium carbonate dissolved in the solution. Okay. So that's a simple rundown. Let's take a look at an example that's a little more challenging. So here we're looking at lead 2 hydroxide. So let's go ahead and write out our reaction for that. So lead 2 hydroxide dissolving into water is going to produce lead 2 ions and then 2 hydroxides per formula unit of lead hydroxide. So again, we're looking at solid turning into aqueous ions. And the question says, what's the molar solubility of lead hydroxide, lead 2 hydroxide, and the pH of a saturated solution? What's the solubility in an alkaline solution? So we have a second question here. So to start, we're going to look at dissolving in water. Set up our ice chart. We're going to ignore our solid. We need to look up what our KSP value is. So we go to our chart, and it turns out it is 1.43 times 10 to the negative 20th. And that's going to be equal to our lead concentration. However, this time our hydroxide ion concentration needs to be squared because it has a coefficient of 2. This 2 comes that exponent there. Okay, so let's set up our ice chart. We know we start with 0 of each of these. Now, in reality, we actually start with 10 to the negative 7th of that in neutral water. But we're going to assume that's small enough to ignore. Then, 
we know that for every change in lead, we get double that change in hydroxide. Or in other words, every one of these that dissolves produces one of these and two of those. So I'm gonna gain x of this and two x of this. So at equilibrium, I don't know how much I'll have, but I do know that I'll have twice as much of this as I will of that. Okay. From there, I can plug in 2x into this, I can plug in x into this, and my KSP value. So I will get 1.43 times 10 to the negative 20 is equal to x times 2x quantity squared. Now don't forget that squared applies to the 2 as well as the x. So this is equal to 4x cubed. So we can divide this by 4 and cube root it to find x. So x ends up being 1.53 times 10 to the negative 7. Now this one's a little more complicated. What is x? So x here, we trace back, is the lead 2 plus ion concentration, and that's in a 1 to 1 ratio with my salt dissolving. So this is my molar concentration. So this is my answer to this question here. This is the 1.53 times 10 to the negative 7 molar. 2x is my hydroxide concentration. So 2 times that, which would be 3.06 times 10 to the negative 7, is my hydroxide concentration. Well, let's look at that for a second. That's not actually that much bigger than what I ignored in the first place. So if we went back and said, oh, I started with 10 to the negative 7, and then I added this, it's going to be a little off because I would have to factor this into how much this changes by. But let's assume for a second that I just start with 10 to the negative 7 and add this much. So in reality, it should be a little more than this, maybe not quite this much. Maybe we shouldn't use so many sig figs here. But we do start with the neutral water, which has some hydroxide. If I take the negative logarithm of that, that will give me my pOH. And I could, of course, subtract that from 14 and get my pH. So the pH ends up being, the negative log of that is 6.4. So subtracting that from 14 gives me a pH of 7.6. Okay, so now I've got two answers done, but now I want to know what's the solubility in an alkaline solution with pH of 13. So let's go ahead and reset. Let's get our equation back up here. So now we're, we're, when we're starting with a pH of 13, what that means is we're starting with an initial quantity of this. We're ignoring this. So we're starting with no lead, but we're now starting with 0.1 molar hydroxide. So a pH of 13, of course, gives me a pOH of 1, which means my hydroxide will be equal to 10 to the negative 1, or 0.1. So now, I'm going to go ahead and do my changes like I did before. I'm going to gain x and I'm going to gain 2x. So at equilibrium, I'll end up with x concentration of lead 2. With the hydroxide, I'm looking at 0.1 plus 2x. And based on my last answer, based on my k value, that 2x is going to be very, very small. I'm looking at a situation where very little of this will dissolve. So 0.1 is probably so much bigger than what 2x will be that I can safely ignore it. If it's 0.1 plus 0 0.000000 something, oh well. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to plug in that into my K expression. KSP is equal to my lead 2 concentration times my hydroxide concentration squared. Okay, so we get X times 0.1 squared is equal to the KSP value, which was 1.43 times 10 to the negative 20. So when I do my rearranging here, I'm going to divide the 0.1 squared into this, and my x is going to be equal to 1.43 times 10 to the negative 18. Now my last problem, I was dissolving it into water, in neutral water. My solubility was 1.53 times 10 to the minus 7. So having a pH of 13 causes that solubility to drop by over a billion. So more than a billion times less poor phrasing there, but less than a billion times less uh, will be how much of this will dissolve if I'm adding into a solution that starts with a 
significant quantity of hydroxide present. 